In this video, I will show you composite decking and glass handrail. If you've missed beams, joists, and blocking, go back one video. Blocking's all in, and I'm gonna start with my uh, picture frame. So, picture frame is what I call is just a nice band of the decking material that goes around first, and then you put the other pieces of decking in between, and it hides the groove end of the grooved composite decking board. So it's pretty necessary if you're using the grooved decking boards because you can see the end profile on each end. So this is the way to cover it down. Now, I went through with the homeowners. Because we have just about 32 feet here, we actually are gonna run a center one as well and create two bays of decking so that there's no joints along each piece. The joint is just hitting a center, center batten all the way through. So to get started, I'm going to dry fit out my non-groove pieces that I'm gonna use for my picture frame and slowly work at it. So I like to take an area that I know is perfect, like this 45 degree corner, and that corner is perfectly square. So I'm gonna start by cutting a 22 degree on these two pieces and see how they flow and how good of a miter I can make right there. Then I'll get down on that end, make another miter, make it that way and work my way around but i always have in the dry fit extra materials so that i can cut short and dry fit and check and then cut short because i like to keep things really really tight um, when i get a board that the joints are closing i'll run one of my cortex screws down into it to hold it there Now, this is a super tight miter. Like, I couldn't be any happier than that. And that's kind of nice, because I kind of believe sometimes the first cut is like the most important one of your day, your morning. If you make a bad cut on your first thing in the morning, sometimes it's best just to call it for that day. I mean. Honestly, I've had days where I kept going and I will just have the worst day for some reason. So, first cut, look at beauty. Let's carry on. When using Cortex screws, make sure to pre-drill on certain materials. So check with the supplier to find out which materials you need to pre-drill. This joint. All right, so I've got my I got my picture frame all complete. It's hanging over about two inches all the way around, which is perfect. Now my miters look really, really good. I took some extra time making sure that's all perfect as well. Got a wicked blade on there. It's a Diablo plastic cutting blade. And I think it's made for plastic laminate, but it just shreds through this composite decking, making miter so perfect. So I definitely really recommend that. Now I'm just trying to figure out my exact center from my furthest point to my furthest side so that I can put a center batten 
down through to create the two sides of decking. So I've got a couple marks here. Now I'm gonna get one board roughly fit across and then get the blocking in that I need to catch each side. After that, I should be set. Rain delay. The storms here roll in fast, but sometimes they just leave right away. I got my center band backing in here and on these end cuts, I do expect a little expansion and contraction. So I'm gonna leave like a business card thickness in at each end. But you can see with my backing in here, this added another joist two by 10 through and nailed a two by four to the side of this one. Should work out perfect for the application. Now what I'm gonna do is I've squared up the whole pile of ends. So I'm just gonna lay all these ends against that wall, dry fit. And what I'm gonna do is then I'll start doing an install off this side here, full boards, working back, and not gonna cut them to length. Gonna move this out of the way and then chalk one chalk line across. So the first two boards I put on, like the first board there and the first board there, will be cut right. Then I'm gonna chalk a line or draw a line on it all the way across and make a nice straight line before I install this one and do the same on that side. So um, now when I do this side, I might remove my picture frame and let the boards hang over and make that cut and make that cut and put them back on so that I'm not struggling with making the miter over and over and over. So a couple of ideas for that. So I'm about to carry these boards in. So let's take a look. frame straight as an arrow so I've got my next board brought up to it I'm using the cortex screws with the hidden plugs to get the first board started and after that I'm using tiger claw so on each joist I've got a tiger claw clip going on and I'll show you the first couple boards and uh, basically I'm gonna run all the way through once I get to the end I'll make my line and cut and then slide over my batten that's gonna end it off there and then carry on to the second bay. So you grab a clip and put it up onto center of the joist, tie it up to the decking. And snug but don't drive it in so far that it's sinking down like you're not counter sinking these and i'll bring you in close once i get a couple of rows so you can see the actual operation
quick look at the joints. Now, it's about 25 degrees, getting closer to 27 degrees right now. So I wanna show you each joint, how they're super tight because the material is actually expanding in the heat. That's why I choose to do my miters tight at about the 15 degree weather. And then when it gets upward, they only get tighter. But later in the video, I'll show you the next morning when it's probably like seven, maybe six degrees and everything shrunk back. So the deck is actually gonna move back and forth. Now there's some controversy. Some people don't like miters and they'll do lap joints and things, but I had weird corners like 20, uh, 45 degree angles. So I wasn't really able to do the nicest kind of lap jointing or, or, or non miter joints. So this is the way that I stick with. And I'll show you later on the, the gaps that do happen and each manufacturer of this composite material has a different thought on expansion and contraction. So you should speak with the supplier and then make your assessment from there. That was a long day. This is kind of what I got going. About half the deck decked. Took me a little longer to get the boards down than I thought and was dealing with some rougher weather. So I'll pick it back up tomorrow. Start by cutting that line across there and uh, figuring out the rest of the decking that way. Then I can move on to the glass handrail. Wow, looks like it's going to be a stormy night tonight. So here we are the next morning with that six to seven degree weather. And you can see the gap in the miter there was about an eighth of an inch. And I'll go around the deck and show you all the joints. So that's what I'm talking about with the expansion and contraction. That's always going to happen. And I mean, there's a couple different ways, as I mentioned earlier. Another way I've seen lately is people will do the miters, but they will intentionally leave gaps between. It's all, all up to you. And then later this afternoon, they will all be tight again.
the boards worked out to the exact full boards, just like I calculated. That's a really tricky detail to make sure you start and finish with full boards. That is uh, first class detail. Now, here I am, I've got all my boards ran wild, except for the first two. Now I'm gonna make a line using this piece, which is the one I hand selected. It's got lots of nice color in that deep V graining that I like. I'm gonna run that through here. I think I'm gonna put the graining shooting that way though, so it's got some flow like out to the water. So I'm gonna set this up. Um, I'll probably uh, clamp down a straight edge and I've got my circular saw set to the depth that I'm not getting into the material below too deep, but all, all the way through the decking, of course. So I'm gonna get set up, let's go. All right, I'll cut that to length, tack it down, leave like 16th inch away from the edges of the board. I got that perfect temperature again, about 15 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's great. Now I can, um, I've already got the two pieces removed so I can run my stuff wild again. Then I'll mark and cut that and mark and cut that. And that should wrap up decking, but wow, like, what a beautiful bay. I'm gonna rack this in dry, come up with kind of a hack line outside the, the beam's edge so it's not sagging as I do my installation back. And one final piece of advice when decking, make sure you check for straightness on each row. It's very easy to get away and start squiggling around a little bit. It's quite common actually, so do your best. Um, sometimes you need to use a chalk line and you can pull lines from the other bay. Make sure you're going straight all the way across and that'll make sure you keep your boards relatively straight through your installation.
this might be one of my hardest tasks ever to reuse aluminum glass handrail so here's the owner supplied rail got a couple pictures he sent me of what the configurations are here's the owner supplied glass quite a few pieces all right this is as far as i can go with the decking today the homeowner had bought some used handrail thought it might be a good idea to try to reuse it here so i've got some bundles of handrail which are pretty good marked i got a 25 foot a 29 foot run a 13 foot run and a four foot run i'm not too sure what the post configurations are or what the details are but i've got a 15 foot side 23 foot side and i've got to figure this out so i think this is a good spot to start to see what components i got and see what else i need to order extra to try to make this all work for my buddy so um, i don't recommend it we're probably not going to line things up with center like we should oh look at that beautiful but uh it's worth a try so let's check it out i think i'm going to start with the 25 foot section across here because that's 23 feet and i know that that post will be wrong so i'll get an extra post out and probably have to put it there and cut the rails so that's my thought then i'll use the 29 foot section to come across here and then i'll use the 13 foot section to get from here to like here and then I'll have some scraps to see where they go over there. This turned out to be quite an interesting task. The posts were two different type of posts. Some of them had holes through them so that the rail could go through them. Some of them had clips. In my experiences, the ones with clips are more like buy at the box stores, quick grabs. The ones that our through holes are from professional companies that do aluminum handrails only. But for you viewers at home, this could be a really good opportunity to learn from because there is such a variety, you're going to see how things go together. glass handrail so this glass handrail was a handrail that was up previously so it's used and I've been asked to put it together the best I can and get some custom pieces to make it all work so I've kind of broke down the packages and came up with a pretty good layout that I think is gonna work now I'm gonna show you how I would start whether it's brand new or reused which is always with brand new screws so these are the hex head black hex head black screws that I'm going to screw the post down with. Now, one thing I like to do is I will set all my corner posts right away, get that out of the way. And then I'll likely work from that way and around and get back around this way. So I'll start by putting one, two, three, four, five posts. Then I'll work away from the corners. So what I've come up with is the reusing the panels, there's going to be a filler panel in the center. Then I can go full panels, there's going to be a filler panel right there at the off angle, the 45. Then there's another filler panel there, and then I think there's one more filler panel here, and it should all work out. So let's get started. Um, with the base of the newel post, because I am going through the thicker uh, composite decking, I will begin by putting each post where they're going to go, mark a uh, spot and pre-drill those holes so these screws go in through the composite easier. I will not pre-drill into the wood, that's where I want the bite. So.
Yeah, that sounds good, buddy. And just, uh... Glass handrail today. This guy... It's pretty firm. Always like these extenders on my drill so that I can get down there without rubbing the end on the head of the newel post. So that's a perfect post. I'll set this one up here. And I'll bring you in closer in a couple once we get going here. Now you see there, that time I got the two ready because these ones are kind of in weird spots. One's hitting right on the joint, so I got the two in, knowing that it's strong. Now I'll uh, pre-drill my holes and put it in. And I'm not really going through and leveling these or tightening them down too tight at this point. I'm gonna work all the pieces in to each post. Then when I'm done, I do a final leveling. So if uh, everything's looking really good as I'm going, I don't worry about it at too much at this point. All right, now that I've got these ones on and the cameras here, I'll probably show you this bay, probably that bay, before I move along to those other ones. So uh, I'm gonna bring in the pre-cut pieces off the 45 corner. Uh, gonna try to keep everything in the hole. They never marked which exact post the rails came out of, so I can't use the exact same holes, but should work out pretty good. There might be some additional holes where I can't go in the same one because it's already threaded out but uh, I'm gonna start reading that inside corner and I should be able to see where they were before and get a screw right into them. It's 45 degree angle cuts. And here's what I was saying, like I can naturally see that that was inside the post up to that line, just cause it's kind of worn a little bit from the elements and this side here, right there. So just barely in the post, but enough to get a, a screw into. It's also very interesting. Some of my posts have clips like this. Some have insets in. They're both working. All right, now when I get the appropriate brackets, I'll attach it here, connect into this one, and custom cut these rails. Then I can measure the size of the glass space that's between these type of posts to make sure I got this size, and I can get this custom piece ordered. So I've now got to here with it. That's my next post, I gotta work a bay back. Then there's that custom fit piece in there. Um, and I'll start over on the other side probably take you guys up there and shoot downward on the rest of the scene. These are the tech screws, self-drilling black tech screws.
Alright, so how I used those hex screws loose before was how I was able to snug this plumb or this post plumb this way. I'm looking really good that way. Perfect. Now, if you are having bigger issues with leveling your posts, it is acceptable to use galvanized washers underneath these uh, screws to do some shimming if necessary. So if I find an uneven area, that's what I'll do. I'll use galvanized washers at the screw hole locations to tweak them whichever way I need to to make it work. Now that I've got this corner post set, I will use my tech screws and screw the top and bottom rails into this post. Then I'll move along to the next post. Now that I've got the rails screwed, locking these posts plumb. Now I will pre-drill my holes and get the line posts mounted down to the deck and plumb them this way. All right, everything is looking really good. And I've got this all screwed in and fastened, so it's, it's pretty rigid. Uh, this section, these three bays are ready for their glass. That last bay went great. So we're gonna start up on this section, working from the corner again. Remember, the corner is the most important part. It's gotta be so plumb both ways, and then you get to build off of it. So take your time on the corner. Can't express that enough. All right, there's another section complete. I'm gonna work this last end and um, measure up for the glass for the missing pieces. And we'll have a wait for that because it's temper glass, so they can't just cut it. It's gotta get cut, sent off to a factory to be tempered. But uh, it's coming together. We should get our glass and uh, our decking and our fascia boards by the end of the month and be able to wrap this thing up.
All right, that wraps us up for today. Again, we were using salvage material. So I've got a couple of bays here where I've got to get the clips to get mounted to the posts. But I got far enough today that I can measure these glass panels and get those ordered. So that's what's important. I'm also waiting for this decking. So that's going to conclude our video for today. If you want to see how this one finishes off, I recommend watching the next video, the last video, which is kind of like the final. So it's the fascia pieces and then talks about all the stuff the inspector's going to be looking for, which means like using all your hanger nails, making sure you put your bolts through your saddles, making sure that you've got all your connections complete. So stay tuned for that. And for now, I guess I've got some glass to clean. <laughs>